Now we're on the internet, and the first question goes to John Waters. You love to hitchhike. Do you worry about your safety when on the road, or are most of your experiences extremely positive? John, tell us about this. You hitchhiked well, I'm all writing a book, so I'm not going to tell you all, but I did hitchhike across America. Nine yeah, you days. started in Baltimore. Started right out front of my door in Baltimore and ended in front of my apartment in San Francisco. So nine days, 20 rides, and it was hard getting rides. I had to wait eight hours. I ran out of water one day. I thought, do I have to drink my own urine? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was not easy, but every <laughs> ride was great. Try it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, why? What because I'm writing a book about it, and I, I imagined the first part is I imagined the worst that could happen, and then I imagined the best, like two little novels, thinking up every ride, and then I actually did it. And um, so I, I hitchhiked when I was young, and I wanted to give up control. I just wanted to throw everything aside and, and try it. But people must have recognized No, they don't. They all thought I was homeless. People came over to give me money. <laughs> <laughs> you learned that? I, well, this looks like a homeless person. <laughs> you're a, you're, you're a very recognizable. Not, recognize not when you're standing in Kansas on an entrance ramp. But what about after? <laughs> <laughs> all right, the other thing I wanted to ask about, we ran out of time, is the, uh, the Queen's Jubilee. Uh, I know you have written about this, and you said it cost them a lot of money, right, England? Well, it costs any country a lot of money when you shut down your um, operations. And, uh, you know, it's been two days. It's probably about 1% of their GDP. As you know, the IMF forecasts this year are 0.4 growth in, in uh, Britain. It's you mean because be... they took the whole day off? Yeah, those two extra days. Yes, but but isn't tourism what keeps that whole island afloat yeah, I mean... these days? Well, listen, I don't want to be the Grinch that stole the, uh, the Jubilee, but you know, the fact of the matter is, you know, <laughs> these economies are a very vulnerable place already. Um, you know, an extra day perhaps, but two days, um, you know, maybe it's a bit excessive. But, but when you think of why people go to England, they go to, like, walk across Abbey Road, you know, because no one's ever thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I and they go Australia. to see the Queen. They, I mean, that's... I mean, when you she go... was there in Australia, when she was on tour, she's as hard as working as Lady Gaga. Believe me, she changes her outfit every day. <laughs> she appeared... It was hot out. She had all those hot pastel suits, costume changes. She works hard. And she had the best line ever. She said, you got to see me to believe me. <laughs> Which is a great line. She said that? She did say that, yeah. So you're saying she works hard Good for the for money. Her. I, I, want, I want more So her. hard for more. it, honey. Yeah. So you better treat her right? I think she's great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Although, in your theory, if they gave up all weekends, their GDP would soar. Well, I mean, I'm not saying, well, two days off. Issue, well, there's issue around productivity, right? So, okay. <laughs> um, what do you think of Rick Scott's voter purge occurring in Florida, and do you think he will comply with the Justice Department demands that he cease it immediately? I mentioned that in the monologue. That's pretty scary stuff, because, you know, whenever liberals say Obama's got it in the bag, they're not saying that so much anymore. They were telling me that three months ago. Um, I always say, well, here are the reasons why I think he could lose. And one of the big ones is, well, he's black. You know, <laughs> people are still pissed off about that. Uh, the economy, uh, Mitt Romney's a businessman, and that's going to be great. And then voter suppression, just cheating, which is what they do well. <laughs> this, is, this is something that, you know, I get in trouble for saying this, but this is a problem that Republicans really have made up out of nothing. There is no serious voter fraud out there because right. it's a felony. Yeah. Uh, no, there it, isn't. There really isn't. I mean, it, it is theoretically possible, and you see people on the Internet do it where they get... Um, you know, they go up to the voter registration and say, oh, give me Eric Holder's ballot, and then they pass it. But you never see them actually take the ballot and vote because it's not right. worth it to go to jail for a felony for right. one single vote. So it, it is absurd. I mean... People register <laughs> like I'm Chuck E. Cheese. I voted but, twice but then, once. Then, <laughs> what's it? I voted twice once. And you got away with it? Yeah, in 1970. It was kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> for Shirley Chisholm. <laughs> Shirley, yeah. Yeah. her poster was yeah. outrageous. Yeah. So I thought it was she a good thing. To do. Two uh, votes. She did deserve it. <laughs> she really I know she wasn't going to win anyway. She was a pioneer. Yeah. That's true. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> By the way, the answer to that question yeah. is he won't, he's trying to resist the Justice Department ruling, yeah. but the amazing thing is the local election officials aren't purging the people he's saying they're supposed to purge. They are refusing to do something they think is illegal, which is really remarkable. Okay. Um, would it be better if the country just got over this notion of American exceptionalism? Oh, I think it would. Uh, I mean, yeah. this, this is... This is, by the way, this is one reason why I say, and people laugh at me, but I always say, in 100 years, this country will be Mormon. 
<laughs> it's a stupid religion and a stupid country. They were made for each other. <laughs> and, and I tell you, one of the things Americans are going to love about Mormonism when they find out about it is that, first of all, Jesus is an American. <laughs> Jesus is an American in Mormonism. And they love the idea that, w that Mormons embrace more than anybody, that we are the super-duper, star-spangled, best country ever. And if we have any flaw, it's that we make other countries feel bad because our awesomeness is so overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we should get over it. What do you think as, a, as someone who watches this country from well, abroad? Well, listen, um, we, people who live outside the United States, we watch all American television. I grew up watching Dallas and Dynasty and, you know, it's back. Glutes, I know, I couldn't believe it. I was so happy. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, the point being that, you know, we, that's what we love about America. But at the same time, I wish America would say, gosh, what have we done wrong? Instead of pointing fingers at everyone else and saying it's because the Chinese are liars and these guys are cheating. Maybe take a look at yourself. You make me want to defend Mormonism, I got to <laughs> say. I mean, the, uh, the two things. One is I do think that Mormons face a tougher rap than anyone else because their religion was founded uh, within the last 150 years. By a Absolutely. con man. <laughs> what? At least well, Jesus uh, was sincere. <laughs> you know, his... you are, I, I, it's good to hear you say something good about Jesus. I, I've but, never said anything bad about <laughs> Jesus. I think, you know, thinking he still lives is stupid, but I, I've never said anything bad about Jesus. His philosophy is fantastic, you know. I mean, you know, that was a truly revolutionary message he had. But I think the Mormons have all of the records of their religion in a way that none of the ancient faiths do out there. And I think, and, and American exceptionalism, I think there is something about the, I mean, I talk about this in the book, there's something exceptional about our relationship to democracy, the way in which we were sort of pioneers in this. That part of American exceptionalism is true. The part that Absolutely. makes us uh, look arrogant, I don't like, but I don't like anybody who looks arrogant. I, all religions are fine with me. Do, believe what you like, just don't make me do it. And mind your own business. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel. Yeah. Well, they sometimes affect all our lives, you know, like when they cause wars and crusades. But that's they're not minding their own business. Exactly. Yeah, when they're causing wars. Right. Um, Black Knight asked Susan Burke, what do you think of the federal court's ruling that rape and sexual assault while serving in the military must be deemed incident to service? I'm hoping that we'll be able to overturn that ruling. I do not think it should be held to be a prerequisite when you sign on to defend the nation. You're not signing on to be raped. Is that what that means, incident yeah. to service? Yes. And that's what a federal court said? Yes, the district court, uh, we have three lawsuits going. Uh, district court dismissed one, holding that it was into incident to service, that it could not be questioned at all. All right, and finally, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, John, about uh, cannibalism. Since well, here's so the much draw. in the news this <laughs> week. Here's, here's and, something. Uh, I know you have a musical about it coming. No, no, no. You <laughs> must be doing that. I have it's in one of your movies. It's in one of my, two of my movies. Pink, uh, Mink it was Stole, in Multiple right? Maniacs and Pink Flamingos. But right. I haven't personally tried it yet. <laughs> but <laughs> here's that drug. It's methadone, and it must be so embarrassing to say, got me methadone. It's methadone, stupid. Other junkies would say, no, it's methadone. What, do you got a speech impediment? Is that, is that what the that's what bass sells. Methadone. Got any methadone? But it must be so embarrassing to be a methadone addict. You think that's what's causing? <laughs> and then I read a thing about this other kid that did it and it said he ripped his testicles off. And I said, yeah, then what? You know, <laughs> don't torture me with narrative. <laughs> no. And so... It, <laughs> Backstory, yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Just... And then. Yeah. Okay. All right, we gotta go. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Pat. We'll see you next week. Real time with Bill Maher. Ask Bill and his guests your questions right after the show at HBO.com.